Hello and welcome to the calculator guide video on iteration using ants on a Casio ClassWiz. Let's take a look at the question fx equals x to the power 4 minus 2x cubed minus 8. For part A let x0 equal 0 and we've got to use the iterative formula as shown to find to three decimal places the values of x1, x2 and x3. And notice how the iterative formula is a rearrangement of the fx that we have. The root of fx equals zero is alpha, and for part b, by choosing a suitable interval, prove that alpha equals negative 1.338 to three decimal places. So in calculate mode, we need to input zero, which is our x zero, as our answer. So it's zero and then equals, you can see it displayed on the answer line. And what we're going to do is input the iterative formula, but where we have xn, we're going to replace that with ants. So we need to do this very carefully. Shift and cube root, then one half. You can input 0.5 as well here if you find that more convenient. And then we want ants in place of xn. So the power four minus four. And what will happen when we press equals is that it should use zero uh, where we have ants there and get us our next iteration, which is x1. So here we have negative 1.587 to three decimal places. Now what should happen automatically, if we just press equals again, as negative 1.587 is now our answer, the calculator will use that value in our iterative formula to get the second iteration. So if we just press equals, here we have the second iteration, negative 0.938 to three decimal places. And then if we press equals one more time, we get the third iteration, negative 1.534 to three decimal places. Three iterations for part A. Now, what sometimes happens is you can make a mistake in terms of inputting your iterative formula, particularly if it's more complex than, than this one. And the problem is that then your answer has changed. Currently we have the answer negative 1.534, we want to start, if we want to start the process with an ants of zero. So let's just show you what I mean. If we start again by inputting our ants of zero, and let's say I inputted the formula incorrectly, let's say I made it ants squared rather than x to the power four, everything else is correct. If I press equals, I've got some iterations here, but these are incorrect, and I've realized I should have inputted four as a power. If I go back and change that, to power four, what it will do is it will use the ants that we currently have here, negative 1.4456 and so on. So if I press equals at this point, this is not going to be the correct first iteration. So what I want is I want that ants of zero without having to type it all again and start from the very beginning. So what I can do is if I just press zero and equals to make that my answer, notice it's on the answer line here, but also notice there is an up arrow here. And what we can do is if we press up on the navigation pad, we can scroll back to the formula, and if you press equals, it will now process zero as the ants. Notice how we've got our x1 here, press equals x2 and x3 that we want. So if you do make a mistake and your answer becomes something that isn't your x0, you can just input that and go back to your inputted formula, which can save time there. And I'm going to show you for part B that we can use a similar sort of process when we're using stored values, such as values stored in X. So let's have a go at part B. So we're looking for alpha. We've got to choose a suitable interval to prove that alpha equals negative 1.338. What we're looking at here is upper and lower bounds to which we would round negative 1.338 to three decimal places. Well, the lower bound would be negative 1.3375. From there, or anything above that, we would round to negative 1.338. And then we would take the upper bound as being negative 1.3385. And they're the two values that we're going to use in our original fx at the top here. And what we're expecting to find if there is a root between there is we're looking for a change of sign. So we're going to have a negative result and a positive result. That change of sign will prove that there is a root uh, in that interval. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my lower bound, which is negative 1.3375. And I'm going to store that in X. 
and then I'm going to just write out fx in the calculator as written. So x to the power 4 minus 2x cubed minus 8, press equals, and here we have the result from using the lower bound, it is negative 0.01449 and so on. So that is negative, uh, which is what we we're hoping for. Uh, now what we want to do is to use the upper bound, but what I can do is use the formula that's already written in for fx. All I need to do is to store a different value of x. So let's type out the upper bound for the interval, which is negative 1.3385 and store in x. And here we have it stored. Use the up arrow to go back up. And if I just press equals again, the calculator will process that as the new value of x. So 0.00583 and so on. We can see that's a positive value. We've got a change of sign in between the interval there. So there must be a, a root, which is alpha in between those two. Uh, and therefore to three decimal places, alpha will round to negative 1.338. So there we go, how we can use the Casio ClassWiz to do iteration using the ANTS feature, how we can go back uh, and edit for different values without having to retype our formula. And we can also do the same with stored values as well. So we can check an interval to check that a certain value rounds to a given number of decimal places. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos, but that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time on The Calculator Guide.